Everyone, I'm Captain Logan, and I'm Eric, and welcome to the Tick Season One Part One Spoiler Cast. Today, we're going to be talking about the first six episodes, or five, and a little bit about the pilot because we've talked about the pilot, or at least I've talked about. No, we both commentary. talked about the pilot because we've done a commentary. Wow, that's nuts! Here's a, here's the thing we've never done before: a spoiler cast on a thing that we've already had a chance to do a to, to do a, a commentary for because we because uh, we actually got to see the pilot before the rest of it because the way Amazon greenlit shows or greenlight shows is really strange. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, it just dropped today as we're recording this. This isn't going to go up until Monday, but we are. Uh, but this came out uh, Friday of this last week at the time that you're that you're seeing this. But it's the day that it is right now. Yeah, but we were able. You may think it's Monday, but it's actually Friday. That's right. For, for but we were able to go ahead and binge this on the day that it dropped because it it's was only six episodes. Six episodes. We didn't watch the pilot again because we've seen it so many times, mm -hmm. and uh, these are only twenty-five to twenty-nine minute episodes. So uh, here we are. We just got finished binging five episodes, and uh, we are recording and talking to you directly after. We've had no time to mull this over whatsoever and uh, to talk to each other about it at all. Um, Eric, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up right away and just say that um, I just want to cry. I just want to cry. I've only been waiting for, for this for my whole life, man. Uh, Is this what you thought you were going to get when they first announced the live action The Tick in the early 2000s? No, not really. I mean, yeah, sort of, in the sense that I didn't know that I didn't think that was going to be a sitcom, mm -hmm. and I was having all those debates that you and I have had with the Jeff about back then. Uh, you yeah, know, that's my stepdad, uh, who's who's a big Tick fan. Uh, and by the way, he's going to do this show with me probably episode to episode at some point. Okay, cool. uh, we're gonna we're gonna start a Tick series at some point. We'll probably after we finish TMBG. Uh, but anyway, he and I used to have conversations just before that show, John, the Patrick Warburton show, uh, about like whether or not they could ever do Chairface. How would they do the weird, crazy stuff? And uh, the answer to that was, well, they were making a real low-budget sitcom, and so that kind of stuff wasn't really going to happen. And obviously, uh, Eric and I have talked about that show, too, and I like that show. We, uh, that was our first marathon. Yeah, that's right. But this is... This is what I, this is this is what I would have always wanted from a live action show, but I, I can't even say it's what I've always wanted because I never thought I would get it. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like uh, Sonic Mania for me in the sense that I've been waiting for, for twenty years, but I never thought I'd get it. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh boy, just nearly everything about this works and is is was wonderful. Yeah, even the fact that they only dropped half the season kind of works okay. I yeah, mean, because I'm, it, what it, I'm really I'm really anchoring to see the rest of it, of course, and I wish I didn't have to wait several months. It's not supposed to come out to next year, I guess. Well, and what's nice is at least according to Wikipedia, uh, based on the way it ends, we know for sure this was not like an Amazon, or even if it was an Amazon choice, they were aware of it. Yeah, it's not like they wrote and and started making episodes thinking that they were going to drop 12 at once and we just stop in the middle of it like this feels like the end of the first trade right yeah that's that's exactly um, right especially because they acknowledge it yeah and it's so funny the way they acknowledge it yeah now of course uh, this as it says in the title there this is a spoiler cast and i don't know if we've given people enough time to watch this so if you haven't had a chance to, to watch it finish it before you watch this obviously it's a spoiler cast but oh man cliffhanger that's the best. And, and here's the thing. I don't know if you had this. In, in, through that sixth episode, and I promise we won't just work our way backwards, but in, but in that last episode, uh, it, it was it was fun, and I was still enjoying it, but it wasn't a laugh a minute like it had been. Mm. And I started kind of wondering about that, where I was like, oh, this is starting to get kind of dramatic. And I mean, there, there's, there's some drama throughout, uh, but uh, I was kind of, I don't know, I, I was missing the laughter, right? And it all becomes worth it when one of the biggest laughs of the whole experience is that is that last uh, is that last scene with the terror uh, with, with the one-two punch with the Alexa joke and then cliffhanger uh, and it almost felt like they were building to that and they were trying to uh, like like make sure that we weren't laughing too much so that we were really anticipating and then, and then you know whatever this ending was going to be we get it was so funny well and it kind of fits thematically with the first episode, because the first episode's not a laugh at either. It's not. And um, I was really surprised that it got to that place so quickly, but that it worked and it didn't feel like it was a big tonal shift either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Uh, like you said, we're watching, it's a show that remembers that there's both day and night. Yeah. Um, and that's all it is, because when we saw the the, uh, the trailer, we were like, oh, it's weird, all these scenes are in the daylight. Like, did it turn into sort of a different show? And No, it, it doesn't. No, it just sometimes... 
there was daytime and sometimes there is nighttime, which is a really weird concept that I'm still trying to wrap my brain around. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, there's this there's this thing called the sun. Yeah, and uh, it's a massive incandescent it gas. Us, yes? and, yeah, it sure does. And uh, when it's daytime here, it's nighttime some someplace else. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. I, I don't want to. just got rain. But I don't want to. I don't. And I don't want to break you with the moon. So we're not gonna. We're not gonna talk about the moon right now. Does it circle the sun? Uh, yes. That's how that okay. works. Mm-hmm. And it has letters written on it from when Chairface Chippendale tried to write his name. That on hasn't the moon. happened yet. And then it got. Oh, that hasn't happened yet. That hasn't okay. happened yet. But it could happen. It could happen. And at this point, and that that is one of the things that I'm most excited about. I think anything could happen in this mm-hmm. show. Uh, I think they have both the means and the gumption mm-hmm. to do. Anything, both from the comics and and not. Uh, Edlund loves doing new supporting cast for whatever his Tick series is. Mm. This is something I've learned. Where uh, I thought with the Patrick Warburton show, it was just we don't we don't have the rights to certain characters, mm. and that had to have been some of it. Because why would you do analogs to Batman? Well, you know, for for Batman well and Captain Liberty, uh, but then you get to this show and. Uh, we didn't. Besides the terror and Dot, there's nobody you recognize. But they're all equally uh, fun and and hilarious and likable as any of the other supporting cast he's had for any of the permutations of this of, of this continuity of, of this great. character. Overkill's wonderful. He's so funny. Um, it's a it's a it's a wonderful uh, like 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 overhauled version of Big Shot. It's like Big Shot, you know. But but it's it's like Punisher meets Deathstroke meets uh, I don't know, just just BVS Batman. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But he reminded me of uh, you know obviously a number of mercenary characters. We're really making fun of that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, no, no, he's 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 a setup of the Punisher, uh, definitely, but. More nuanced than Big Shot was, right? Yeah, and I kind of expected him to uh, once he was he started being jokey because I don't know why I didn't expect him to be funny at all. I just thought he'd be you know a, 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 a killer guy. Mm. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. I'm watching the Tick, you know. And and by the way, Edlin writes a, a, about half of this. Mm. Um, I think more of his episodes that because because I because I, I looked at the at, at the list of the of the twelve and we don't have the the titles for all of them yet of the mm. ones that aren't out yet. But um, we we do know who writes each of them. And I actually think that he writes more in the back half, but um, okay. but his his presence is certainly felt all over this. Yeah, and he wrote at least at least uh, some of these scripts. Well, and David Fury's wrote wrote at least one of them. Mm-hmm. So his yeah, name. I mean we've just got a powerhouse team on this show. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's really exciting. That the Tick Brain Trust is still intact. I talked about that when, when we reviewed the, in the pilot and talked about it uh, in the in the uh, commentary. But um, I mean, it's it's just so authentically the Tick. It's 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 what it always was, except more sophisticated uh, than it's ever been, which is wonderful and more uh, adult than it's been in a long time. Besides comics, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do the other comics retain that to some degree? Okay. Yeah, because I would have assumed post cartoon the comics would become more like the cartoon. You know they don't, totally. and there's and the and the thing is there's not as much once you get to the cartoon. I mean they, they do. Um, well, no, I guess I guess in the in the mid in the mid nineties we were putting out quite a few things, but yeah, they're not they're not so much. Okay, interesting. Uh, believe it or not, yeah, my my uh, my advice to uh, parents with kids with the tick w- would always be uh, you might be able to hand your kid the tick, but you should probably thumb through it first. Mm. This one probably not at all. Probably not, and and uh, and I let Jason watch the pilot after I saw it a couple times, but mm. but not but not. Well, and I that. remember when I moved here, that was a conversation. Yeah, it was. Uh, you and Sarah weren't sure. By the second episode, uh, if we had already had it all, that wouldn't have been a conversation at all. Mm. Uh, which is something I regret a little bit, just because it's so funny and he would love it, mm. and uh, I would at least so far I would say that there's not too much about the story itself. No, it's that is that is because like, the really mature stuff would go over kids' heads, but the but the the swearing is there, and mm. uh, there there is um, not a ton of gratuitous violence, but we do it with Overkill because his name is Overkill. I mean, it's this is great. We have violence that doesn't serve the story so much as it serves the comedy, and it, mm. it, which does serve the story. Uh, but like, it needs to be there because it's so much funnier. And when and, and like when, when the tick comments on the violence, mm. it's funnier because it's so over the top. Mm-hmm. And also, it, it continues to be a parody of the uh, Netflix uh, Marvel shows. It's Overkill. I I would I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> and then, and then, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think? Arthur did it. Yeah, we're gonna have to have the talk. That, that's a, Arthur. I feel like that was a little too murdery. 
Uh, Sarah Finowitz is glorious. No, he's great. Everything he does is gold and works. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I get there's I, not a single like line reading or like choice where you're like, I don't know about that one. Everything he does works. Mm. Uh, everything I wasn't sure about initially with, initially with the pilot, they've either fixed or I was wrong about. Mm. Uh, the big one is I buy that the tick is big and powerful. Absolutely. And uh, is nigh and vulnerable and all of that stuff that was much more difficult to convey uh, with, with less of a budget or on a sitcom works. Uh, from episode one to two, uh, there's like a bazillion D dollar jump, mm -hmm. and and it's and it's just well, yeah, great. because uh, 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 Miss Lint has the has the lightning, and we didn't see that at all in the pilot. I think, I, um, yeah, but I think they were they were saving it for a big reveal. I think they might have done. Uh, we didn't watch it today. And they might have done like sparks and stuff when she pick her hand up. I think they were okay. like leading up to it. Okay, you, I, I, we already had a sense that she had that power. I Did think. We? I, oh, I I thought, thought she was just. Or I remember getting the sense that she was just a heavy, but. Now I kind of wish we'd watch it again. Mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly forget about that. But that's a character I didn't expect to come alive and have a character arc. No, she's great. she's great. She's great. She's great. Well, name a character who's not. I mean, everybody works. Yeah. I even, think. Even even his, like, random, like, uncle. Oh, Team no. and Tick are the best. Well, well no, no, no. It's not, it's, not, it's not an uncle. That's that's a stepfather. But I thought he said he was, like, his uncle. Like I think he's family. Like I think I think he's blood related. So no, no, no. It's just it's, you're talking about the guy who talks about the feet. Yeah, yeah. no, that's his stepdad. Is it just his stepdad? Yeah. I thought they referred to him as another moniker. Well, okay. How could he be a stepdad and his uncle? Well, I mean, he could have been the one that helped raise him. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, I mean, he's great. But no, no, no. They say that that's a stepfather, and and that's important because his dad is dead, mm. and that's supposed to be the father figure, and he likes superheroes, and like all, all of that is, I think, going to be really important. Um, no, he's, he's wonderful. I didn't expect to like him mm. uh, when we first heard about him, and then he turned out to be the Dharma guy from Lost, and I didn't know that guy had comedic sensibilities, and he's hysterical. I, I loved him I, so much, and I, I hope he and the Tick get more screen time. I, one of my favorite moments uh, in, in, in the whole thing is the tick sitting next to him, being just as excited about him opening his birthday presents, and then... And then when they freak out about the shoes? Well, what what I loved is, because they shoot Oh, and he gets the dog book, and then we see yeah. the dog Yeah, and then we yeah. see the, the dog. Uh, but they shoot it so that you see him and the tick sitting there, and I was like, oh, that's fine, like, the tick, like, sat next to him, and you see everyone else on the other side of the room, like, clearly the tick's supposed to be there. Like, I was like, oh, it's the tick being, you know, uh, socially unaware. And then he leans over, he's like, tick, look at this! Like he has the tick to sit. Next they just become automatically best friends. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it's great. Um, how about the sense of continuity in this show? Oh, it's great. It's 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 wonderful, and like everything pays off. Uh, I, I guarantee you. Like like if we go back there and watch, we'll catch other things. Yeah, I kept trying to pay attention to signs. The background. I'm glad we watched this on a projector because mm. there's so much to look at. Mm. Uh, but not just visually. There is, uh, and I mean, like there's a lot of cool visual foreshadowing things. Um, I mentioned the dog poster mm. uh, about, about the title of that book. We see a poster for it earlier, and I thought mm. the title was funny. Uh, but I figured it was just a throwaway thing in the background. And then he gets the book, it's and, written then, by and a dog. that's what he It's written by a dog. And like there's an escalation all of that where and then we find out that it's actually uh, this important thing. That's connected to going all the way back uh, uh, with the well, and then you realize the that, that the flashback that we had when he was a kid playing with the toys that there was a dog there yeah and and, and also also the news broadcast where we like slowly see the 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 was it way too large man or whatever yes um, the very large the, 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 the news VL, broadcasts are phenomenal the VLM the very large man because you just hear little bits of news and it's all hilarious. I love that we have no idea how that happened mm -hmm. uh, and I bet that'll pay off. Mm -hmm. uh, but I almost don't want it to actually have anything to do with uh, the A story. Yeah. Like yeah, I, no. I kind of hope it's unrelated. Um, I wonder if it has anything to do with well no because that was just a commercial. I was going to say that that green sludge stuff that uh, Superior that was great. Uh, uh, has with those kids but I think that was just a commercial. There's a, there's a thing that they did with, uh, with Powers where they said that they they, they did, like, the, the ride-along thing where, like, they went to the police station, and they saw that the police stations are full of these, like, books for kids. Like, it's like, you know, all these, like, coloring books. It's like, hey, kids, don't do not do this. And so they made one for Powers, just a full coloring book for kids about, like, how to live in a superhero world. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and it reminded me of that. This kind of has that. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, hey, kids, that might be radioactive. And they're like, oh, you probably have cancer. There's so many super vintage Edlin things, and he hasn't even remotely lost his touch. Uh, if anything, he's gotten more sophisticated. Uh, the the, um, the Onward Christian Soldier thing is so funny. 
Uh, so one of the Flag Five's name is uh, is Christian Soldier, and he names the talking dog Onward, and that's hysterical. Uh, and the talking dog is uh, is is um the the voice of the tick from the cartoon show, uh, who's uh, Townsend Coleman, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought that was that was wonderful and it was super cool they got him back. And if Patrick Warburton doesn't show up in the show at some point, I'll be really surprised. He's uh, gonna be Perry, right? It has to happen. If they do Barry, they have to cast it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I can't imagine. And we can't be the only people that have thought of that. Like, no, no. Surely but, that's what they. Or if not, he, he at least has to get a cool cameo somewhere. But I this, could see him being like Mayor Blank or something. Like I could see, you know, I could see, I could see some, you know, some other character that you're semi that, that Tick fans would be semi familiar with. Or well, I don't know. Just given the sensibility of this show, like I could totally see Barry just showing up. Yeah, and I really hope that happens. And, mm. and I hope that the terror isn't the uh, only other heavy hitter from the comics, you know, that we get. But surely, surely not. I really want to see Chairface. I do too. Um, well, and I mean, because this show is absurd enough to go there. And the uh, Superion is uh, an alien, and I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't do more alien or alternate dimension stuff. Yeah, I'm, hoping for, thra- I'm hoping for Thrakazog. Oh, of course I am. We kind of have a riff on the Thrakazog thing with uh, with Miss Lint and her. Uh, and her her roommate, who's her ex husband. Oh, you're right. There a little a, bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's hysterical. Yeah, there's a bit no, of no good call. Uh. Lint has a uh, paralleling character arc going on with Arthur, and that's really cool. And I uh, and, and kind of because like I, I I find her weirdly endearing, and I find myself almost like happy for her when she kills someone at the end, and that when when she kills that Ramsey guy. And, and the Ramsey guy is maybe as far as supporting cast for because he's probably the weakest. He's maybe the weakest link, but he has some funny things to say yeah. uh, here and there. But he on his own isn't that. But, but he's supposed to be a throwaway character because he's supposed to die. So like. Yeah, I guess well, that's kind of okay. Well, and, and he's supposed to be pathetic. And he's like really early on, like he. I think it's the first time we see him. Like we really quickly establish, like he doesn't have a connection to Egyptian things. He's just like everybody needs needs something. That's it's real, all that's real Evelyn type it, thing. It's all uh, brand recognition. And I like that she uh, refuses to brand herself with that because she doesn't. Uh, she, she she doesn't think that he's like the the big all evil thing, mm. and uh, doesn't want to go along with that. And then ultimately the terror finds her, and then she kills that guy. Mm. I mean, it, like I said, just everything pays off. This is so tightly woven. Mm. Uh, well, and there's threads. That and story wise, everything works. There wasn't anything I was questioning. No, I don't, no, know, I don't and, know if you had anything. And there's but. threads that are put there to be picked up later there's something going on with her and uh, an overkill and they right. have a lightning bolt scar and there's a lot of like little subtle hints to like you can tell things going forward. They're going to have some kind of a romantic history, I'm sure. Mm. But that, but but their their tattoos the lightning bolt or thing. the lightning bolt thing, they, they've they've got. There's got to be obviously there's something, something there. there. And uh, I'm I found myself wondering if they might end up being the Batman well Captain Liberty. On I show. was also wondering that. And. I, I stopped myself for a second because I was like, well, you can't do that. She's a murderer, but then so is he. So she could get brought over to the light side, mm. and she they could end up being the, the two the, 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 the couple that pals around with Tick and Arthur. Mm. Uh, that could totally happen. And I could see... Um, and, 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 and he I, seems and like see, the modern version of Batman well. Like what you would do with that in an R-rated show. It, all the way to the point where for a real split second when he took his mask off, it, it, initially I thought he might have been Nestor Carbonell, and Nestor Carbonell totally could have played him. Mm. Yeah, um, I almost think they might have cast him because he looks like Nestor Carbonell. <laughs> uh, but they, um, but I don't know. I feel like uh, I, th- that, that's a dynamic that could totally work moving forward uh, if they did, like like decide to make them good guys. Mm. Uh, and I could see him like like uh, Overkill, like uh, Big Shot from the cartoon show, becoming the ex gun toting vigilante. You know. Well, and he's less gun. He's less gunny. He's he's real stabby. Yeah, he's real. And, and Tick calls him stabby. He calls him Mister Stabby. Mister Stabby. Yep. Um, uh, I think it's interesting. That whole thing about like we have to have the talk. Like you said, that's that's so funny. I think it's interesting that the the Tick now is the only other thing like Superman, where there is a Superman TV show every decade. There has now been a Tick show every decade since the nineties. That is wild. Yep. We just made it in under the wire for this one, but. The Tick is now like Super because Superman has, has had a TV show every decade since the '80s. If you count Superboy, you have Superboy, Lois and Clark, Smallville, Supergirl. If you count Super, there's a Super show. Yeah, because '60s and '70s he didn't have a live action show. Right, but uh, the Tick has now had the Tick has now had a show every decade. Well, and I guess Superman, if you count, I mean, you have to count cartoon shows if you're doing them with the Tick. I guess he actually probably has had one every decade. I don't know if he had anything anything in the '60s. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
but obviously in the 70s mm -hmm. with Super Friends and stuff. Yeah. But, but anyway, uh, no, that's hilarious. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, and and I, I mean, I never thought I would say this. We, we now have four iterations of this character. There's, yeah. there's four there's four tick iterations now, mm -hmm. and that, and that's it, it's absolutely nuts. Um, I'm one of the things I'm I'm really excited about uh, is is of course just all the stuff that we don't know yet, but that I'm trusting we'll find out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really cool. Like I have no doubt that Edlund is going to explain. Uh, the tick nightlight when he's a kid thing. We mm -hmm. will get that, yeah. don't, you, don't you think? I try. I trust Are that. you bothered by or worried that we will get an origin for the tick? If I'm so fascinated by the idea of making that mythology that I want to be okay with it, uh, and I hope I'm not reading too far into it. But what it what it what it sounds like so far is that the whole uh, tick is absent-minded and oblivious and doesn't know who he is thing uh, that we always do as a joke, and even possibly the whole he thinks the costume is his body thing, which the way that's handled in this is wonderful. Am uh, I never naked, or <laughs> am I always <laughs> naked? Um, is I. Uh, uh, that's being played like it might end up being mythology, mm -hmm. uh, where where because uh, uh, he says that when he's not around Arthur, he gets really confused. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I I don't, I, I want to know if I'm th if I'm reading too far into that, or if that's not a thing they're gonna explain and pay off. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because because that line I really think could have gone either way. It could have gone either way. I'm just not sure. The only and and you notice that uh, when uh, Overkill's uh, boat computer, who was uh, voiced by Alan Tudyk, I didn't even notice. I it. didn't. I didn't get you. Uh, when when the boat computer uh, does the facial recognition. Wait, thing, it, it has a name. It's Danger Boat. Danger Boat. Thank you. I couldn't think of it. It has um, its own song that it made. Yeah, and it's it's, it's hilarious. Um, that that set's great. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's really the AI cool. is really funny. Uh, just everything about the god, it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's just so good. Uh, anyway, um, but but when when he goes through the facial recognition stuff and is trying to figure out who the tick is, we never go back to that. Mm. He's running through it, and then we don't know what he. Can if I he's tell found you? Anything. Can I I'm tell gonna, you? I'm going to assume that he didn't find anything. Can I tell you what my theory is? Do you have one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are going to get an alien invasion of, of 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 a tick race. I don't know how I feel about that. That's my theory. I I think Superior might be red herring. I want to think that maybe it. it oh, so you want to think that Superior is not from space, and that that ship brought the tick down, or that he is from space, but that is not the alien threat that we're worried about. Yeah. I think the tick might be an alien. Yeah, see, just any, but anything you could say, I'd make that noise. I think, like, I what I want, and I don't. This is this is like a have your cake eat it too thing. I want somehow or rather it to be a mystery that is really effective and doesn't, and we never actually get an answer to, but it's satisfying that we don't. Get an <laughs> That's what it needs to be. Um, but but we could it, the show could effectively explain the nightlight thing without explaining the origin. Yeah, he could be tied to Arthur somehow, um, and still like like. But we're making a big deal out of that he doesn't remember past like a couple of days ago. Right. Yeah. And it seems to be proximity to Arthur. It seems like as long as he's around Arthur, he has short term memory. But if he gets away from or long term memory, if he gets away from Arthur, he loses his long term memory. Um, it's also possible that, uh, or no, I guess short term. Anyway, I'm that sorry. we'll go back and find out what happened to him to make him lose his memory, and then we'll find out like, well, he was a person before, and then where that person came from, we'll never find out. Did you notice the reference to the insane asylum? Yes, yes. And I, I don't know if that means that we'll that we'll get that, but that's at least an homage to the comics. Would mm -hmm. you come from an insane asylum? Yes, in the comics, he, he did break yes. out of it. Like, actually, they say, did you break out of it? And they say, yes, that's how it happens in the comics. Um, it's it's just, I mean. It's redundant to say reference for material because it's the guy who created it, and that's unusual too, right? For a, for a property or a superhero like this, that the guy who, who who originated it is three decades later still around and working on it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's uh, for, for for television, mm -hmm. uh, like not just not just in comics. That's kind of unusual. Well, he's he's readapted it in three completely different ways now. It's also probably the only reason that we're still getting it is that you know Adlin you know, yeah. you know pushes that he pedals it. He wants yeah. he, he he wants to get it made again. Um, well, and it's nice that he still cares because I think, uh, given how young he was when he made the tick, I think a lot of, I think a lot of creators, like move on, and they're like, ah, that was the thing I made when I was a kid. That it, was cool. It's but also amazing that his sensibilities that haven't changed too much, mm -hmm. humor wise. Mm -hmm. uh, the the only criticism I have now that I've seen the rest of this, uh, or the rest of this up to six with the pilot, is I. Uh, 
I wish somehow or rather uh, we could have been asking the question whether or not the tick is a figment of Arthur's imagination up until dot season. I wish somehow or rather we could have done that. Mm. Because I don't think that's as effective when we've seen him by himself and he's uh, dealt with the, the mobsters. Well, Arthur says... I don't says, know how you could have done it. Well, but. Arthur says, I'm the big blue man, and I think you're supposed to think it might be like a Tyler Durden kind of a thing. No, no, it, that wouldn't possibly work, though. I don't um, think so either, but... Just because other people describe him as large, and they wouldn't. That's true. I mean, that's the that's problem true. with it, is that mm. we, we see other people see the tick, and they're definitely seeing the tick. I mean, that's the problem with mm. it. So, so you're right, like, it could be a Tyler Durden thing if it was, like, when they're... Uh, you saw a Fight Club. Even if, like, uh, when they're... When he's by himself, we're not seeing Arthur, but they are. But like they talk about him like he's huge. That's true. And also, he's uh, he would be dead because he, uh, they they shoot him before he has that that suit on. They You're shoot right. the tick before Arthur gets the bulletproof suit. There's there's no way. What does he call him? Tiny bullets? Something bullets? He has a line. Not I forget. Bullets. It's great though. But there's also taser tots. Yeah, taser tots. Um. I cannot believe what this show looks like. Mm -hmm. I no, it looks amazing. And and and, and like, you have to imagine they have like six dollars. Yeah, I uh, I mean it's got to be a little bit better than that. But um, the um, the stuff where where Arthur's stuck in the, I couldn't believe he was stuck in the suit that long. Like half that episode, he's flying around. Yeah, it was just amazing they were able to keep him you know in the air and keep it making it look that good. That and the way. costumes all look so good. Yeah, um, all of them. The Arthur suit is really cool yeah. and works really well as the MacGuffin device without yeah. that being irritating. It yeah. really works. And there's precedent for the Arthur suit being a MacGuffin. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go back to um, to uh, I can't remember the name of the episode, but uh, the 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 Itlon episode in uh, the Amian series in season three. Uh, the um, or no, it's even before that. Excuse me. Um, but the, when, when we introduce Carmelita, uh, the the uh, there's there's a group of Swiss agents, uh, who uh, one of them has a giant Swiss Army knife, and uh, they're after the suit because it has a secret in it, and I uh, Arthur has to uh, strip in front of his uh, uh, also moth clad girlfriend and take and take it off, and it's embarrassing for him, and uh, like like we're calling back to some of that stuff really hard, uh, but it's really cool like how much of that kind of stuff we're using again, and how much of just like tick tropes and things were, were in and like uh, motifs we're going back to and like like reinventing them and putting them in this in really fresh new ways like uh, like how many uh, tick story points did have we gotten to in Arthur's origin story already mm. that's that's really like like we've already had like Arthur um, misidentifying someone he's seen before because she's wearing a different costume we've already done the champion thing we've already done like we said earlier uh, the tick thinks that his suit is actually his body uh, just just all this stuff mm -hmm. like we've all we've already somehow rather got and how much do they get done in 25 minutes well and and it's interesting that the the first half of this season that we've got um, is essentially the Arthur origin movie. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's cool that we've already kind of gotten past that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that moving forward for the second half, he is done with the I don't want to be a superhero. Well, like, because he's kind of completely embraced it by the end of this episode. Yeah. Um, I don't think he will go back to that anymore. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he'll have second thoughts when he goes up against the terror, but mm. anybody would. Because mm. uh, he's horrifying. And he remains horrifying. And, 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 and you know, something else I want to really give this credit for, the show credit for, is every time it does a flashback or a dream sequence, they're always really good. Yeah. And yeah. They, they feel, if not necessary, uh, like, worth, worth watching. I'm yeah. glad I saw them. Uh, the, the terror with the orange eyes. Oh boy, it's just when horrifying. He, when he takes off the the helmet, yeah. he looks just like the comic book of the terror. Yes, like, he, does. he looks great. And the performance is also straight off the page. Uh it's and I mean like I got a little bit of that in the pilot, but I only got him for one scene. But man, mm. when he's like having dinner with Lint and stuff, and I didn't expect to get this much screen time with him. Mm. This early, I I, I assume that he would be the last the last shot reveal. That's what I thought, and then we get a cliffhanger reveal for him at the end of five. Uh, even though we'd already gotten a little bit of flashback stuff with him, which I think was really smart, just to keep him in our in mm -hmm. our purview. Because by the time you see him, you you want to have spent enough time with him somehow. I mean, flashbacks can be cheats, but again, I didn't feel like it with this. So mm. um, we've already spent enough time with him that when we that, that when we get to him in present day, um, we we kind of have a sense of him mm. and we're excited to see him because he's so interesting and so mm. much fun. Um, that that uh that whole and just 
preposterous, of course. I mean, I love how they're making fun of the convoluted master manipulator story where he's just making stuff up as he goes along. Well, yeah, he knows it and says it's it like and jazz. it's wonderful. Is almost exactly what he says. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, I have real, the it's bass really funny. And the he's got he's got the drum track and the bass and he's just looking for a melody. Yes. Uh, that's a great line. And and he's and before that and the reason he gets to that again, we've got I mean, this is this is Edlin. He's a really good storyteller in his own right, outside of comedy things or things that are just far. That's just a farce. Um, there's like real honest to god characterization and real dramatic storytelling here. Mm. Um, the terror comes up with that because it's a character trait we just established. He always wanted to play the drums. He spent the last few years learning to play the drums, and then he has that line. Uh, that's 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 wonderful. That's like that's like basic storytelling stuff. But we're not. Uh, leaning on the farce just to not have to actually do that kind of legwork. The, mm. the legwork is still there. Um, but yeah, I have nothing but good things to say about Jackie Earl Haley. He's, He's amazing. amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. Um, and, and the makeup's amazing. Um, it's some of the best old man day makeup I've ever seen. Yeah. Like it just it looks great. And I mean, I mean he's, got, he's got skull face. He's withering yeah. away. And yeah, he's great. Um, <sighs> okay, so I want to talk about one of my favorite things. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, don't if, I don't know if you know this. I'm sure this has come up. My my dream is like whatever though like what kind of superpower do you want is I want arc lightning from my hands like that's what I want out of life is to be able to shoot lightning from my hands. You don't want it anymore. Not after this. Well, I've never seen anyone do this. I've read about a lot of lightning characters and I've never seen anybody uh, address the static cling issue. Oh, it's fantastic! And Edlin has this thing about lint. Lint is funny to Edlin and he <laughs> brings it up. Because uh, I told you about the the episode in the animated series with Lint Warp. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, th there's this whole there's this whole explanation about Lint Warp about how uh, you when, when you uh, when you put your pants in the dryer or in the in the wash or whatever, uh, it's got lint in it. And then when you get your pants out, it's it, it's or, or like or I, I forget. It's like it gets in. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I'm sorry. It's it's when you get your pants out of the out of the dryer, it's got like lint in it. And uh and and it's and and the explanation is how did it get there? It's that fast. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's the tick versus the big nothing. It's one of my favorites. But uh, and that episode has uh in 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 Arthur alien race and a, a race of people that all look like Arthur. Which um, makes your your tick theory interesting because we've done that with Arthur's, um, but I I um, I just I love the insane attention to detail with the lint thing because I don't think either of us got it immediately uh, when she gets in the no, cab I felt so dumb, and she keeps I was like why is she doing that? yeah and I was like a static cling um, oh it's great it's great um, and then. The thing with the vacuum is pretty funny. And then when she's got her hair down, I'm like, oh, she looks so much better with her hair down. She should do that. And then it immediately goes, Zzz. and I was she like, can't. oh, that's why she can't. <laughs> uh, everybody's playing this straight. It's got to be hard to find an actress that can pull that character off. Oh, but she's great. And and not wink too much at the camera. And mm. she doesn't do that. I mean, she's very funny. Or feel too generic. Right. Like, just kind of generic, like, um, heavy kind of a thing. Is she... She sort of strikes me. It's a similar concept as as like uh, as like moist. Yes. In Doctor Horrible. Yes. And it's like they got that right. Mm. Well, you know, Edlin's responsible for Bad Horse. Of, yeah. No, I know that. I, uh, I probably told you that. Honestly, you probably, you probably did tell me that. Um, but uh, yeah, is there? Because you know, Bad Horse is kind of a riff on Madding the Cow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who I totally expect to show up in this. No, oh, absolutely. Manny and Cow will show up in this. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's going to happen. At least something like it. But yeah. No, it's great. Um, yeah, I, it, like, and, like, I hope they go as far as like screwing up the moon and... Anything's you know, possible that. in the show. I think any of that they'll, can They'll go anywhere. The, the the big thing I'm concerned about is that we're not going to get enough of it uh, to see all that stuff. I mean, like we're, we're splitting the, the first season into uh, two sets, and we're not going to get the next set, again, according to Wikipedia, till next year. And I don't like that. Um, and I don't like that. I don't like having to wait that long. It'll be worth it because it's great. Mm. Uh, and again, I love them making fun of it. It's it, like like when when he when he goes cliffhanger. Oh my god, that's so great. Um, it makes me think that maybe they. It's nice that they got to know that that's what was going to happen when mm. they when they when they uh, filmed it. But I get the sense that maybe they're not happy about that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can see but, that. But I'm glad that they got to be conscious about it because they gave us enough of a whole piece that there is enough to tide us over, and uh, I don't feel like it's so much of, of, a, of a cliffhanger where, like, it's, it doesn't feel like it's right in the middle of six and seven. It feels like it's in the middle of part one and part two. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like, like you yeah. said, like, like trades. Yeah, well, because well, when we were in about f episode four, I'm like, all of these episodes are just kind of ending and the next one starts. Is six just going to end? Like, I, I started getting worried about that. So did I. Um, but it doesn't. But so. I also started to think that they might meet the terror and take him out in six because things were moving at such a clip. Mm. And I'm not complaining that that didn't happen. No, no. Um, because it, that could have been way too rushed. I'm actually kind of glad that didn't I, happen. I really hope this does well, but I, I'm kind of worried this only going to get one season. I am too. I don't know how many people are going to actually be watching this. Uh... But I, I they can't, are they I are. can't complain because if I only get one season, I get the the, the, the best live action tick thing I could have possibly hoped for. Um, I used to I don't know if I've ever told you this, and this is going to sound really silly maybe, but um, years ago, uh, like in high school or whatever, and and before we had anything like this superhero movie onslaught, um, I used to have dreams about a live action tick film. Really? Just this impossible thing that would never happen, right? And uh, I, I, I had a, I had this a couple times, this kind of like recurring dream about this like really epic live action tick film, and it looks like this. I mean, this, this is that. We got, I mean, we, we got the closest thing to it you could possibly get. Uh, and if so what you you're saying is you weren't having dreams, you were having vision. That's right, exactly, right. Well, and it might have had something to do with that blue nightlight I had. I'm not okay. sure, okay. but I uh, like. like if, even if you had a, 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 a big screen tick, it, this is not that far away from what that would have looked like. Mm. No, no, Produ because it would, would always be a lower, lower budget It thing. would have been lower budget, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it, it would look a little bit better than this, but not much. The new suit is phenomenal. It's great. Uh, and I thought it looked great in the pictures, but it looks really good uh, in... And, and it makes him look bigger. Yeah, it does. And and I noticed... Um, I, I don't know if they're shooting... Him high or Arthur low, if Arthur's just really short, or Sarah Finnewitz is actually a tall guy. But when they're standing next to each other, he is he like Arthur's like him. here. They're doing a great job of making it kind of ambiguous as to how tall he's supposed to be. And mm -hmm. I hope at no point they give him a, a height. Like mm -hmm. I hope they don't say it's eight feet or ten or whatever it's supposed to be, because uh, it's 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 working without telling us that mm -hmm. he's just he's just a really big guy. And he didn't feel that. Bad. I mean, I complained about that. He didn't feel quite big enough to me in the pilot. Ever since then, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um I. I think you I see like him drapes on a rooftop. Yeah, and and it's and it's well, and you get to see him like bounce really high. Yeah, uh, in in a, in a couple. He of jumps shots. onto a water tower and then like off of it. Yeah, I, uh, I I'm really surprised by how much of that kind of stuff we're getting. Um, Although to be fair, the jumping on the water tower is I think the the, the weakest bit of CG in the whole thing. Yeah, it is. I'm not complaining about but it. But it still looks pretty cool. Yeah, no, it still. Looks um, cool. I think I like. The uh, throwaway line about him look di looking different. Yeah. I think I think I'm okay with no, that. No, no, no. I, I, that's that's the that's the Iron Man two. The I'm here to me deal with it. Kind yeah. Of thing. The only problem I have with it, of course, and this is not nobody's fault. Nothing anybody could have done about it. I suppose uh, is just that not everybody's gonna get why that had to happen mm -hmm. because people aren't gonna realize. There's Amazon's like a year policy, between, yeah. and that they had a they had a pilot, and then they had this because again the show looks different from the, from the from the pilot of the second episode, and it's not it's not a jarring tonal shift like I said. It's just they got more money. It just mm -hmm. looks better. Yeah, uh, but it is very much the same show. And like I said, I, I, I'm really impressed by uh, how much of a Netflix Daredevil parody it still it still is. Mm -hmm. um, I hope second season maybe if we get to second season is the million zillion ninjas. Although not starting with it, I don't know if I want it second. But mm -hmm. But I don't know. Whatever. Um, uh, I will say Amazon does seem to be pushing it. Um, yeah, they're doing a good job with that. It's it's the front banner on Amazon, and I went to YouTube. It's on YouTube. And it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, so there. Did you notice the banner on top of YouTube? You can click on a character and find out about the character. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's cool. Is that how you found out about Overkill? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, I really like that. They they, they are they are they are selling it. It's gonna be really hard for least. me to not call him Overkill. And I can't believe they got to use that name because of that whole thing McFarland made a big deal out Apparently of. Apparently, it was. He's he's overkill. I agree. Uh, the animated intro is wonderful. Yeah, and I love 
there's 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 such a rhythm to this show. Um, it's really cool how the how the intro interrupts scenes. Mm. I like that a lot. I wasn't sure about it the first time we saw it because I was just like, oh, this scene kind of just abruptly ended. Oh, Arthur's just still in the middle of running away from these guys, and we've just jumped back from intro. And the intro is short enough they can get away with that. Um, it's not a it's not a song that's like in my head yet, but I liked it while I was listening. Do you to it. have a, Do you have a favorite take speech? Because I have a favorite. Not speech. yet. I gotta. I gotta watch it again. I just like. I'm trying to. Um, the uh, falling. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to suss it all. Yeah. That. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, and in fact, I was gonna bring that one up. Uh, the falling speech is wonderful. It's, it's so great, and we just could not stop <laughs> dying laughing. It's so good. Uh, it was so. That was so hitchhiker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was really hitchhiker. I was a little disappointed that we didn't get gravity as a harsh mistress. I really don't know how. You, you do you crash that him on the scene. ground, and you do, and, and and you, and you do a cliffhanger where he is falling, and then your next episode you don't do Gravity is a Harsh Mistress. I gotta go back and see who wrote that episode because it couldn't have been been Edlin. Um, maybe it was, but I can't well, imagine see, he has that that fall and does the flagpole of all things. Well, see, which see, is in the comics and the animated series. And uh, yeah, but see, the other live action got Gravity's Harsh Mistress. This one you get a flagpole. You can't have both in one live action show. That's the rules. And you can make the argument, well, Cap, why why do you want to keep seeing all these lines of dialogue? Well, A... Now it's tradition. It's it's kind of tradition. B, it's a wonderful, hilarious line, and Sarah Finowitz would have delivered it marv- marvelously. And C, he's already had so many of them anyway. Mm, uh, there's I, a lot of them. I complained pilot. about that with the pilot um, initially. There's not a lot moving forward, is there? There's a little bit. Um, there, not as... Not as much as any in that pilot. More than you'd think, okay. but from all over the place. Okay. Uh, there are there are just a lot of token uh, uh, phrases and thing. Dirty pool is in there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you probably just aren't even familiar with. That, he says grok. That pop up. Oh, that was great. I can't remember what he groks, but but he he said yeah, or what he says someone groks. Um, I uh, I also um, am surprised by how much I'm liking Dot. She's just so likable. Yeah. Um. I I kind of wait on her a little bit when we get to the party. And I thought we I were at first. we were going too far with the oh you're not actually concerned about his mental health you're like forcing him to be normal um, and I was like oh that's less interesting she's not just the caring sister for her brother that has like issues it's like a real like a family that thinks they should be normal but and see, then that goes away really quick yeah that's I just, just kind of I the sense that I was, was getting sort of more pressure from her family and th- 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 that like she she may be. Uh, mistakenly thinks that trying to get him to be normal is how to fix those problems. Mm. But, but especially at the end when she takes the initiative and decides she's going to go after the terror, that's awesome. And she's going to start working with those with those uh, with those gang guys, which is really weird. If there's anything contrived in this show, that's it's that contrived. it's that her landlord runs a like she, he's he's night nurse, right? He's evil yes. night nurse. His, her landlord is evil night nurse. Well, t- I mean, to be fair, they're kind of making her night nurse mm. in a way uh, because she's the one that actually does the nursing. Uh, so I mean, well, he starts it. He just seems to be bad at it and yeah, has to keep calling he just her. Doesn't in. know how to do it. Yeah. How, how do you start that business in the first place? Uh, who knows? He's just like I'm making money. Come and come down here. It's also weird that she there does. I'll have to go back because I'm sure it's not an inconsistency. But in the pilot, I got the sense that she was a working EMT. I did too. And now she's a student. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Wait, if that's... is she still a student? She keeps saying that she's. Or she, she says a couple of times she's working her way through med through med school. Oh, I'm. I miss. I thought. I thought because because she... because when she has the speech about the bullet, she goes, "Who's in med school?" or something like that. Yeah. Well, she mentions two two credentials, and that's one of them. And I forget what the other one is, but um, but she could be. Um, I guess I guess there's 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 maybe like a student EMT thing or something. I don't mm. know. Uh. Going back and rewatching it, I'm. She she's in sense. charge of the pilot, though, but I'm not sure. Like she's telling people what to do, and that poor man. I don't that's remember in the that. I just remember her being on the phone and being in the background, like like I'll be there in a minute. I don't remember her ordering anyone around. But okay. Again, we didn't watch yeah. that today. Uh, but yeah, I. Uh, so if you have any, let's do let's do a few predictions real quick uh, because we're right smack dab in the middle of a season of TV now. Mm. Um, I think there is potential that she will become a super a superhero. Uh, I, I think I think she could get a costume. Yeah, and I, I wasn't it, thinking that. But and I, I think they could do a Carmelita thing with her, where if there's another Arthur suit, she's the one that gets it. Yeah, because that's because yeah. that's the thing we do uh, in the comics, where there's another Arthur suit. And uh, now I would, of course, kind of rather have Carmelita because I think that would be really fun. And mm. Arthur's got to have a love interest at some point, I would think. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I I don't know. My my big prediction is, is that we're going to get a race of Tex and Tex and Alien. 
that's yeah, my big prediction. I kind of, I kind of hope that's not what we end up doing. But um, I also want to think that the cliff, that if there's a cliffhanger or a big reveal at the end of season one, it will be another villain that we're familiar with. I'm also, I really hope that. Happens. I'm also gonna make a prediction. I think that Miss Lint is uh, is ex government. Um, going off of the idea that that he's that um, that. Overkills the Batman well, and she's she's the Miss Liberty. I think they're both ex-government because we know that he is, and the scars come from torture from the terror. That's, and she she went evil, and he went crazy. That's possible. That's my and that's my guess on their on their background. One or both of them will have a speech about that uh, that that section of the government that deals with superheroes and how and how terrible it is. Mm. Uh, because they're they're setting that up really hard. Um, oh, I love the Twenty Eighth Amendment thing. Yeah, that was great. That was really that was great. great. Uh, do you th- do you think this is a big question I had at the, uh, at the end of the first episode? And surprisingly, I'm still asking it. Uh, is there is there a mystery with Superion? Is is there is there a question about whether or not he's really like altruistic and what he seems to be? Whenever we see him, he does in fact seem to be. Even when we see him on his own, so far, um, I think he might be a red herring. I, do I too. think I think we're supposed to think there's something up with him. Well, initially I thought I just think the what I what I'm what I mean now is I think he is seeming like a good guy is maybe a red herring and he's going to be something else. Oh, see, see, I, I don't I, know. I think the the very clear implication that he is like the first of like an invader race. I think that's all a red herring. Well, see, I never actually. I actually never thought he was he was the first of an invasion of an invading race. I thought maybe he was just like. He crashed here, and then he uh, like like took advantage of his powers, and then teamed up with the terror or something. Well, no, no, like because no. like, because in the when, first episode, my my whole theory was he was going to end up being teamed yeah. up with the terror, and that seems to be not be the case now. No, when um when Arthur is talking to Overkill about the alien thing, where, where he goes, right, the suit yeah. was designed to face an alien race, um, and I can only think of one. Yeah, and he says, so I think the implication is that he is like the first of an of an invading race, um, which is. The plot of Invincible. So. Oh, okay. Um, spoilers. The very large man thing is really funny. The very large uh, man thing is very funny. Calls back to a couple of things I can think of. Um, he reminds me, of course, of Dinosaur Neil, uh, and he reminds me of Blowhole, uh, in that Dinosaur Neil uh, was actually like, uh, I. Well, actually, he didn't really have his faculties. He's still kind of a Hulk, but like, uh, sort of like Bullhole, he just kind of walks around and mm-hmm. isn't doing anything. Uh, he's not he's not like angry or invading or, or blowing anything up. He's just walking around. But I love that we have no idea what yeah. in the world caused him. And he doesn't actually seem to factor into any kind of plot point. Not so far. But I mean, they're obviously setting that up for saying. I think it's just fun to have something that absurd. And in something's background. going on with Spearing because because he, he says he has he has a headache and, and right. he's like like I never I never have before. Yeah, um, so, so going who on. knows what that is? But uh, I don't know. There's just there's a lot of things to be curious about and intrigued about. There's every reason to and there's assume been, it's all. And there's make been sense, so much set up and payoff already. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you trust it? Yeah. Um, I just I, like six episodes. I just can't get my head around how much material there is. Mm-hmm. I mean, how much we've crammed in without it feeling rushed or, um, or convoluted or anything. No, it's great, and it's 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 a it's a real shame that like Edlin hasn't gotten to do more. TV shows where he gets to run them and they're his. Yeah. Because he's come in and, and, like, I think he ran Supernatural for a couple of seasons or whatever, mm-hmm. and obviously he and worked on Angel. And seasons. Uh, um, yeah, wouldn't it be great to see him do, the, you know, especially retroactively, wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been great to see him do some other things that weren't the tag? But, yeah, uh, I, I just, I, I want, I want him to get a show with a budget on, like, a real network uh, that is just his. But maybe he isn't interested in that outside the tech. Maybe he is not as concerned with the I must write, you know, everything everything has to come from my mind, I have to write my own things. Uh, he doesn't seem to have an issue with writing other people's properties. Well, he doesn't have any issue with other people writing his either. Yeah. Because it's yeah. not like he's writing every script. Yeah. Um Well well I mean like like Whedon you know like Whedon's not gonna do a T I guess I guess he did do Avengers, so maybe maybe not. Maybe that's a bad example. But it does seem like People that do TV shows aren't really interested in doing somebody else's TV show. People yeah. who, run, who run them, I mean. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, God. It's just it's beautiful. I'm 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 losing my mind about how wonderful that is, and and it's a really surreal experience for me because it doesn't seem possible 
that it got green lit, and then I. But I guess if it was going to happen, it'd be now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad it's years. now for for a lot of reasons. One of them being, uh, you wouldn't have probably gotten a, uh, a an ongoing story, uh, chapter to chapter for a tick thing. Uh, without the streaming format. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have that, that probably would have never happened unless it was like on Showtime or something. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't have done a thing like this. I mean, they might have done something that's kind of the Buffy Angel format. If they got a full like 24 season order or something like that. 24 episode season order. Yeah. I, yeah, 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 I suppose so, maybe. But usually with a comedy, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, I don't know, it just that it seems unlikely, but I, it was just, you know, so I'm glad I'm glad that, that this format exists now and um, this platform, uh, but also the the, uh, the special effects have finally caught up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, 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 it looks great. I mean, it doesn't look great, um, but it looks great for the six dollars um, that they that they spend on it, and, and it makes Bond year look 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 like a sham. Um, given <laughs> Thanks, that, that they probably had about the same budget. Oh, I think there are bits of this uh, that that look uh, that actually look pretty pretty. No, 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 I agree. I'm not saying like it all looks terrible, um, but like it doesn't take me out of it when there's shots that aren't great because I'm like, well, I mean, because the really but large no, it man, it doesn't have it does not look amazing. Values, but no, um, no, no, it looks like when they made uh, uh, Neil Patrick Harris huge. Yes, in, in yeah. Doctor Horrible, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's what that looks like. But anyway, but well, everybody, thanks for watching. Yeah. We sure appreciate it. Uh, I like I said, my my biggest complaint is just that we got to wait for the for the next part of it. But yay for they're getting to acknowledge that uh, and give us something that was worth watching in a in a chunk and not you know sit around and and, and, and go oh, but what's yeah, it felt the like next, it had some of an ending and. Because that was the big, and one of the reasons I was concerned about that is we just had that. I mean, it was a different network, but we just we just had that problem with Castlevania. Mm -hmm. We're yep. like, and then what? Yep. You know, we like this, but and then what? Mm -hmm. um, the, the the big problem with Castlevania is I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch all that before I watch the next part, and I will do that with the Tick, I'm sure, but I but I don't I wouldn't feel like I had to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we will see you next week for, well, actually, excuse me, this is going up on Monday, so we'll see you tomorrow uh, with more videos here on Geek Evolution. Uh, if you saw this, leave your comments and let us know what you think of the new Tick show. And, uh, oh, the, the last thing, because I was going to say this a minute ago, I want action figures for everything. Yeah. I uh, really hope that this gets some, some merchandising. Anyway, I am Captain Logan. I'm Eric. See you later, folks.